Yogi on YouTube, and this video for today, I'm going to show you how you can make a design for a gear in a very simple way using the most simple instruments that everyone can have. Uh, this type of gear, it's a sawtooth gear, it's not an involute gear, which are commonly used in actual machines. They use involute gears if they have this type of gear pattern. But this is just the most simple, basic way that you can draw out a gear. Uh, the instruments you need are a compass, a ruler, and if you want, you could also use a protractor, and uh, maybe one of these triangles as well. But uh, So it's a very basic shape of the gear. And uh, I'm going to show you in this video how to draw it out, but you could also presumably make this into actual gears by, by plotting this on a material, let's say a piece of metal or plastic, and then cutting it out. These gears are not precisely designed. Uh, if you wanted to do that, you would actually have to have a gear, making, a gear dividing machine or a dividing plate or even at least a compass that is better than this one. Uh, there, there are sets of compasses and dividers which lock in the position. This doesn't. So what happens is as we draw out the arcs of the gear's teeth, this compass will actually drift out a little bit. If you wanted to make this into a functional gear that would actually match, you would cut this out onto material and then file it down until the gear meshes. This is how gears were made originally on, for example, early clocks use gears designed in this way. With that all being said, this way to draw a gear, I would not recommend it unless you just wanted to draw a gear for some reason. There are better ways to plot out gears. Uh, there are many software tools online. I have made a video myself about how to make a gear in Google SketchUp, and that would be good for 3D printing gears as well as you could just uh, go into a top view in SketchUp and print out the gears onto a piece of paper like this and then cut it out onto your material. So do not do this unless you really want to make a gear this way, but it should work if you try. So now let's actually draw out the gear. Let's first start off by drawing two circles. One is the interior circle and one is the exterior circle. So our interior circle is going to be have a four centimeter radius. Right? So what we want to do is mark out a center point out of here. And since we want to have our teeth on our gear are eventually going to be one centimeter tall. We are going to mark out a five centimeter circle. And this will allow us to have teeth that are one centimeter tall, making the total gear radius five centimeters. So now we have roughly plot out two circles. And now we want to divide our gear into multiple sections. So this gear is going to have 24 teeth. And we can uh, actually figure that out by calculating it. So we, we want to pay attention to this circle. This circle has a radius of 4 centimeters, a diameter of 8 centimeters, and 
if you want to find the circumference, it would be 8 times pi. So the circle that we just drew on the interior has a 4 centimeter radius. And times 2, that gives us 8, and that is our, the diameter of the circle is 8 centimeters. And we want to multiply that times pi to get the circumference. So 3.14 and all right. So the circumference of this interior circle right here is 25.12 centimeters. And now we can actually divide it into the number of teeth which we want. So this is kind of arbitrarily chosen, but try to pick a number that's even, I guess. Let's divide it by 24. So that will give us about one centimeter. We are going to divide our gear into teeth that are 1.046 centimeters. Again, this is not a very accurate way to do this, so we are going to round it to about one centimeter. The teeth of the gear will be about one centimeter wide and one centimeter tall. Let's actually mark out the gear. All right, so what I just did is I marked out the gear into four sections. And the reason is because this is a 24 tooth gear. So that means 24 divided by four, we could have six teeth in each of these quadrants. The reason we are marking out this gear this way is to mitigate error when we mark out the teeth. Because normally if we would do this, we would mark out our teeth all the way around and that will give us cumulative error and our teeth at the last point might not be aligned at all. But if we, if we do it this way, we can mark out our teeth and by the time we get to each quadrant marking, we can correct for this error. This marking is dependent on the number of teeth your gear has, but try to mark out as many markings as you can. So since there are six teeth in a quadrant, we could actually divide this again into eight. So then we could have three teeth in each marked out area. So to do that, this is where the protractor comes in, which conveniently actually almost fits this circle perfectly. But we can mark it out 45 degrees and 135 degrees. And then we can get our ruler and then mark it out completely, making sure to go through the center point. So as we mentioned before, our teeth are going to be 1.04 centimeters wide which we have chosen to round to one centimeter. So how we're actually going to mark this out is get back the compass and mark it out at one centimeter. So now we are actually going to divide the teeth. So find a point right here on one of these lines. And what you want to do is go down and stroke up. Just like that. So shown here we have three teeth marked out. As you can see there are some errors in like this line here. Uh, and that's just because of how bad this compass is. If you have a better compass or set of dividers, you can make a more accurate gear. One thing that I like to do is every time we reach one of these ends, we check to make sure we haven't drifted our measurements out. So we check to make sure it's still one centimeter. So let's mark out the rest of this gear.
that was quite tedious. And as you can see, our markings are far from perfect, far from accurate, but it should be good enough, I guess. Now the hard part is basically done. You have your gear divided out. Now we are going to actually draw out the teeth of the gear. And in order to do that, I've found it best to find the point here and the point at the top and then just draw a line. And that should leave us with a little opening here. So there's the arc which we made and then there's a line. And we're going to make a line from this point at the top to this point at the bottom. So it should be like this. And this is a teeth. So our gear is now marked out. Uh, let's just mark a little hole in the center using these templates. You do not by any means have to do this unless you are actually making a gear. But for example, that is where you would put your rod and that the gear could spin on. Let's just erase all these marks and look at the final product. So that is how to draw out a gear using basic methods. In the future, I'm going to probably make another video actually trying to make a gear mesh by cutting this out of probably a plastic cutting board or maybe aluminum. And I actually want to see if I can make some kind of machine with this gear, make it actually serve as a reduction gearing on a motor for example. So that so that is it for this video. See you at some other undefined time.